not been funny. But a pigeon just flew into my head. It's a new dawn. A pigeon just flew. It's a new day. Into my head. It's a new life <laughs> for me. And I was with my friend. Yeah. And we just looked at each other and went, yeah, that's that's what my life is right now. I'm oh, my God. God. I'm screaming. Are you in a mirror? Screaming. They are, like, looking in a mirror. I'm in the bathrooms at work. I'm touching. I'm freaking I out. I have on my phone. The touching. The, the hands. hands. I'm fucking screaming. I cannot believe Lucky is still asleep. <gasps> oh Wake up. Oh, my God. The teeth are embarrassing. I can't Christ. believe this is happening right I now. I need to come I down from this high that I am oh feeling God. right now. Oh Christ. Yeah. I'm so sweaty. None of you guys were answering. This is incredible. <laughs> Rest in peace, all of us. This is a beans emergency freak out and i'm feeling good hello everyone and welcome back to what a barb kind of an emergency podcast slightly delayed slightly still reeling podcast First of all, Lecky, it's just me and you against the world, mate. Yeah, Beans is busy making cheese, I think. <laughs> I thought you can like making a living, <laughs> but no, she's actually... <laughs> she does have work, but she has some plans to make cheese today. And unfortunately, <laughs> can't make it. You know what? This has been an ordeal because she was trying to make cheese yesterday. <clears throat> we were all heavily invested. She did offer some great life advice about cheese. She did. She had some great thoughts as she was, I don't know, curdling the way, whatever she was doing. Dear listeners, this is Nacho Average episode and we're in a pretty good mood here over at Whatabarb, so you better believe we share Beans' cheese updates with you. I'm not kidding when I say there is some genuinely great advice peppered in. Sorry, pepper jacked in. And yes, I'll see myself out. Okay, so slight tragedy, but it will be rectified tomorrow. I was making the cheese and it was getting really runny. And I thought to myself, oh, this isn't correct, but it's literally cheese. You want it to be like stretchy, right? So I threw it away with the whey. And then I looked at the video again to see what I did wrong. And I was doing it correctly. So don't second guess yourself. If you do it wrong, do it wrong loud and proud. And then learn from those mistakes later. Don't follow my lead. So you got to be more confident in yourself and the decisions that you make. Life advice from Bean. So she's trying to recuperate from that loss in her life. <laughs> Veg is doing much the same, just with less curds and whey, <laughs> I believe. But Lecky, I've gathered you here today because, well, I think you know exactly why. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. First of all, how are you doing? I mean, you're exhausted. I am very tired. This wasn't necessarily the best week for this all to happen, but I'm I'm super glad. <laughs> I was so excited yesterday. But I had a terrible, terrible migraine when this dropped, and I had just gotten off of a work call after working all night on a project. But I was so, so excited to see the footage. As everyone knows, a little bit of background as if you need mm-hmm. it. This week has been, we've had a crazy week or so, mm-hmm. right? There's so much has yeah. happened. But when we last spoke to you with Veg, most recently, Recently, what we'd had was the two clips with Cantony passing the torch mm-hmm. to Pollen. First of all, how are you feeling about those? Super adorable. I rewatched both of those videos numerous times. Not as many as this one. It was just so <laughs> nice to see them interacting with like their co-stars and just talking again. We haven't seen Luke on camera in a long time, so it was really nice to see him talking and like passing out over the torch. So adorable. Just love them. So we were all still recovering from that, mm-hmm. and it definitely felt like a big transitionary moment, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay, so we all kind of felt like maybe something was coming but I don't think we thought this was gonna happen not at all as we're speaking for us it was yesterday Wednesday 27th of March and out of nowhere it seemed like it was quite early on your time it was like 4 p.m our time yeah it must have been about 9 a.m or 10 a.m or so I think I finished my work call at 10 a.m and I saw I had a bunch of messages from beans poor thing she just kind of dealt with this alone for a while (laughs) we were all absent we didn't expect it to happen it was right at the end of my work day and for veg Mm -hmm. as well and poor beans was the only one of us who had her phone to hand and she lost her fucking (laughs) mind with us yeah we we mentioned our our alarm system in the chat it did not work that day (laughs) you know it was serious because she went and made an emergency post on our instagram account which she never does she was like is anybody alive out there (laughs) is anybody here she just like needed someone she was like please have mercy (laughs) yeah oh bless her i saw i think veg was like it's the mirror and i was like i can't sit here and pretend to be okay (laughs) And you know what? We had so many of you guys message us in your excitement. It was it's so fun chatting mm-hmm. with everyone. But there were so many people who were at a various point in their workday who were like, how am I expected to exist under these circumstances? Mm-hmm. A shout out to the listener 
who gasped so loudly at work that everyone was like, what is wrong with you? And she had to pretend she'd been scalded by coffee. <laughs> and then I think there was another listener as well who mentioned how they covered it over. She screamed so loudly that her neighbor came over and knocked on her door to see if she was all right. I can relate. That is very <laughs> relatable. Oh, what was your in the moment reaction? I was like a, a supernova <laughs> inside a little glass jar, just trying to like contain it as much as possible. Picture me. I had just gotten off a work call. I had a splitting migraine. So I had just reclined in bed because I was like, I'm going to take an early lunch. I'm going to take a nap and try to sleep this migraine away. I saw the word mirror over and over. I scrolled up and I immediately just started gasping. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> like gasping for <laughs> All you need to see was the word mirror to be like, oh, yeah. fuck. <laughs> Way back when, back on our old Reddit days, I did remember writing a comment or replying to somebody. I think she thought that there would be like a teaser trailer where we would see Colin step behind Penn when she's standing in front of a mirror. And I thought that would be the extent of the mirror scene in the show until Nicola teased that they were actually going to do the mirror scene. Was it really weird to like actually see that be the teaser? <laughs> it, yeah, it was so weird. It, yeah, it's like a, like a fever dream to actually see something you've envisioned in reality it was so <laughs> strange I lost my mind because like we've been in this for two years right and there was a <laughs> lot of time where especially after filming ended and when we were just in the wilderness weeks where I think everyone was like is this at a point just a collective hallucination we <laughs> theorize and theorize and theorize and theorize to the point where it was like we yeah. had no images for a really long time beyond leaks and it felt like we kind of just were all engaging in this shared dream that was never actually going to come true yeah <laughs> so actually seeing clips is just it's such a fun part like we're we're almost there I can't actually believe we're almost there. And so seeing things like this, it makes no wonder everyone gets so, so excited. Yeah. But as you'll have heard our in the moment reactions, but you know, we've had about 24 hours to recuperate. Mm -hmm. Hopefully your migraine's gone. I don't think you've got had any more sleep though. <laughs> I just thought, get you on a call. Let's go through it. Let's have a chat because there are things to discuss. Yes. We need to get into it. I'm sure we'll hear from the others along the way. They'll bob in to share their thoughts, <laughs> to say hi. But for now, it's just two of us clowning away, Lecky. <laughs> Shall we get started? <laughs> Let's just rewatch the scene together, okay? Okay. <laughs> it's like 22, 23 seconds of footage, right? And we've always said how much of a fan we are. If you pay attention to Nicola and Luke's acting, how nuanced it is, and it's so full of micro expressions, micro gestures, and this tiny clip, and there's no dialogue, it's so quiet. It just says so, so much. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. where's our lovely pen? <laughs> so Penelope is in her bedroom. <laughs> like, oh my God. So much to unpick just from that. She's standing in front of a mirror. She seemed to invest it in some new furniture. <laughs> yes, she has a full length mirror in front of her. <laughs> Do you think it was just delivered anonymously? Like caught in gifts, you get like, she's got a beautiful bouquet of flowers <laughs> from Colin. She's got a book from Colin. Do you think one day this massive fucking mirror <laughs> just shows up in her room? <laughs> she's like, who did this arrive from? And they're like, oh, I don't know. I don't know. It's billed to Anthony's <laughs> account. So I don't know. But yeah, she's there. Mm -hmm. She's in a mirror. I mean, enough said. As we open, we find her alone mm -hmm. at mm -hmm. first. And I love the way she's standing. She's looking down. Yeah. She has like a hands mm -hmm. up towards her chest. And what I love is that her left fingertips are just touching her hand. And then there's this gorgeous mm -hmm. close up where she looks up at herself in the mirror. Yes. Or perhaps she's heard something <laughs> looking up at someone else entering. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because Lecky, who fucking walks into frame, not even just a frame of a TV show, a frame of a fucking mirror. Yeah, it's Colin, my mirror, Bridgerton. <laughs> oh my God, there he is. And Penelope looks up at him and sort mm -hmm. of meets his gaze and he walks mm -hmm. into the frame and strides mm -hmm. towards her and stands behind her. The look that he gives her in this. Yeah, he looks at her expression in the mirror and then glances at her and then glances back at her in the mirror to meet her eyes. Yeah. <gasps> Oh, so good. Because she's looking at him mm -hmm, in the reflection mm -hmm. and there's this moment where he's just looking at her as he approaches her. Yeah. And then he raises his gaze to meet her, just the way he's striding so purposefully towards her. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And what I love is how still she stayed during this. Yeah. The intensity, oh my God. Off the charts. We've analysed over the past two years so many of Colin's gazes at Penn. Uh -huh. And you know yeah. what? There are some incredible ones. Some incredible platonic gazes. So we have seen like intense moments or moments of unawareness but this is so purposeful the certainty in his gaze mm -hmm. and the it's not even a we're so past mm -hmm. awareness I think yeah. at this point it's just so determined and strong yep. with 
Penelope, what we see is this quiet, very sensual, but very contemplative way she's holding herself. Yeah. One tiny thing that I love about this, if you watch it. So do you know how I said that when we catch her in the scene earlier and she's by herself, Mm -hmm. she's sort of lightly touching her own hand. Mm -hmm. But when he walks into the scene, her hand falls away from hers and she's no longer sort of touching or caressing her, her hand. And I love that because it's almost like this moment of vulnerability that she finds herself and then when he Mm -hmm. walks in it falls away and then the next shot we get is and I think we're out of the mirror in this right I think this is away from the reflection this Mm -hmm. is their actual selves where she's lifted her hand so he is resting her I can't even (laughs) say these words like he has rested his hand on her shoulder just bidding his bestie hello just saying hi and her fingertips reach up and it's very dramatic it's like very Mm -hmm. slow-mo and her fingertips very slowly dance across his and then they intertwine there's moment where it's so so close do you know the moment in the Osterly still where they're hilariously close to each other mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. there's like a millimeter where his honor is hanging out in the middle being like they're technically yeah. not touching i'm a gentleman my father raised me to act with honor but that honor is hanging on by thread yeah and there's this moment where she's yeah. almost not yeah. then she is the way i describe this for pen is it's almost like the sensual curiosity to her mm. it's tentative but i don't the way she's looking at him as well is so interesting that i don't necessarily read this as sort of in insecure i see this as intense curiosity and discovery Hmm, interesting and she is a curious character right because that's how she sees the world that's how she Mm -hmm. gauges with the world i think i know you're going with this because we were talking about this earlier and somebody on twitter pointed out they think that penelope's fingers tremble as she reaches up to touch collins but you're saying that you don't think she's tentative it could be like nervous anticipation you know what i mean i think it's like exploratory maybe it's almost like that sort of tentativeness which is sort of a quality that you see in pens of shyness well i was saying it it might not be tentative it's almost like the curiosity wins out yeah but like just the acting the hand acting here from nick her fingers just kind of like briefly tremble or hesitate before they touch his it's almost like a candle flickering i don't think that makes sense Mm -hmm. but do you know what i mean yeah i mean we have to say we've seen some (laughs) incredible finger acting from (laughs) newts in the past but this is just wonderful we should point out this is not the first time they've ever actually touched though is it lucky well no no mr Mr. Colin Bridgerton likes touching Penelope. (laughs) (laughs) It's always been him though, hasn't it, in acting it? Yeah, so yeah, for her to do it is so major. Obviously things like when they're dancing, he's like grabbed her and gone dancing with her, but in the moments in 106, when you can't really see it, but he takes her Mm -hmm. hand in Mm -hmm. his when they're at the the engagement dinner. And then in 202, when he lightly touches her Mm -hmm. bare skin, Mm -hmm. her arm. So this isn't the first time, but this is the first time we've seen it loaded with this mutual anticipation, awareness, commitment mm-hmm. sensuality praise be to these fingerless gloves because so beautiful it heightens every part of it oh god yes and just the sheerness of them just adds the sex appeal to it it's just so so good it's so funny as well because it's like it's them two to a t with like propriety it's like technically wearing gloves <laughs> <laughs> technically <laughs> adhering to it but to return back to the clip and yeah it's only like 23 seconds whatever but we are milking it for every second we're getting so we're back in the mirror and it's the shot of them again with his hand resting on yeah. her shoulder their fingers very lightly entwined and then we have this stunning shot where wait no 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 first of all colin's finger strokes her hand i think we talked about this during our rewatch but one of my favorite moments at Vauxhall after their dance is that his thumb strokes <gasps> her hand and he's doing it again here yes but it is so much more loaded like you said and oh my god that's 101 so we've always had this tendency and this is the beauty of their journey that we have seen them through Uh. these different stages and what we'll see is these parallels to moments they've had in the past like dances and jokes Mm -hmm. and things like that and we're seeing how the tonality completely shifts as their relationship shifts as that awareness comes in on both sides I mean Lecky I know that you love that quote from Newt's in the passing (laughs) of the torches where he was like we're seeing them grow together and it's them figuring out can we make this work in the new Mm -hmm. versions of who we are so it's all these similar moments that they've had throughout their lives but charged with such different energy such different nature to their relationships Mm -hmm. in this moment when Penelope's still staring and I love the way she holds herself throughout Mm -hmm. this whole clip but Colin tilts towards her with the most intense look (sighs) on his face he's like let's get to it and she's still holding gaze and then their fingers are still touching on (sighs) the shoulder they turn to look at one another I mean I can't even believe this is just oh I can't tell you how many times I've rewatched this in the past 
past 24 hours. This is the good stuff. <sighs> he looks like he's going to devour her. Yeah, yeah. Which, you know, he's, he's a hungry boy, as we all know. I mean, that's kind of the breakdown of the clip. End of clip, end of us, I think. I hope you enjoyed us describing the clip you've also seen a hundred times by now. It's burned into your retinas. You know exactly what we're talking about. Now, we will get to it, but we don't think this is actually a literal clip from the show. We think this is promo. Right. But I still feel like this is laying the groundwork for so much of their mm-hmm. story. Mm-hmm. And obviously it's foreshadowing the mirror scene in itself, but I feel like we can get a lot about the journey, the nature of their relationship, the tone mm-hmm. as well, because we know that it's going to be a very playful season, especially perhaps in the early episodes, but it is going to be laced with these moments of sensuality, intensity, mm-hmm. reciprocated mm-hmm. love. Romance. Yeah, absolutely. Can you imagine a more romantic scene than this dreamlike promo shot they gave us <laughs> of Penelope behind a mirror? No, I can't. Lecky. The clips we have so far, we have Remarkable Shade of Blue, which is gorgeous and vulnerable and playful and fun and romantic and silly and wonderful. And then we have Goodnight Mr. Bridgerton, which is the opposite of that. It's dramatic and cold Mm. and painful and so necessary to their story, Mm. so necessary. And then you have this, which again, isn't a clip, but is definitely offering that other side, which we weren't prepared for. (laughs) No, we weren't, no. What do you think this is telling about Penelope's journey of confidence in the season, which we know is going to be a huge theme? About her confidence? Well, I mean, like, she's not shying away from him here. She's comfortable in herself and also in his feelings for her. Do you know where you go from her looking down at herself, very contained in on herself, caressing Mm -hmm. her own hand and then he steps forward and she opens up yeah. drops away and they're intertwined but she's still holding this quiet curious intensity she doesn't appear scared or overly mm-hmm. vulnerable it's it's like tentative but in an empowered way I don't know if that makes sense I feel like a great comparison for this I'm sorry is the water barb scene because in the water barb scene yes. she has to break out of that moment she pulls back from it and this one she's completely in it with him and he's also not surprised by that energy Energy that he's getting from her. They're giving that energy back to each other and they're in that moment together. They're not breaking out of it. Even the setup of the shot is reminiscent of the what a barb scene where Colin walks up right behind Penelope and yeah. the two share a sexually charged moment. Really one of the only ones they've had in the show so far where they shared that lingering gaze that Penelope ends up breaking. And as much as she loves Colin season one, Pen was not ready to handle a moment like that. But here she seems ready to not only handle this type of energy, but to lean into it. If you also look at the what a barb scene, you can see that Penelope is focused on Lady Trowbridge and she has no idea that Colin has instead been focused on her. However, here Penelope is looking straight at them both in their reflection and she can fully see the way that Colin is looking at her. So good. Seeing Colin with that awareness and I, and I think we felt this from the to dumb still, the very first still we got <laughs> of Pirate Colin. I think we said at the time all the way back in June that he had this certainty and determination <laughs> and this self-assuredness which yes ties into sort of his swagger and everything like that and his own self-confidence but when he's gazing over at the Featherington house as we <laughs> believe it to be, he is gazing with such yes. certainty and commitment and unwaveringness and this is coming from a character who we've had some gorgeous looks from him in the past that have been romantically toned toned with friendship and everything like that but the more we see of him it's this it's not just awareness but it's a hundred percent being mm-hmm. in it we've all known he would go completely feral yeah once he goes he goes mm-hmm. and he's in it and he's unshakable yeah. in that but this almost seems like a glimpse of what the relationship will be like after the feral mm-hmm. chaos colin this is a glimpse of a pollen who are already together and they've been established relationship and are comfortable in each other and their feelings for each other. And they feel equal in this moment. Mm -hmm. Different in the way they're expressing it. He's striding towards her. He's the movement in the scene, but she reaches up to him. It's the different ways of expressing Mm -hmm. this equality. And one thing that I love when I'm watching this is that, as I say, it's Colin who's walked into that frame, into Mm -hmm. that situation. But when you watch, it's her fingers that are initially exploring his. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. When he first puts his hand on on her shoulder, his hand stays very still and it's her that is doing the exploration. Yeah. And it's her curiosity. And this is a story of someone who is discovering her sexuality. And this is also the story of someone who has an existing love for someone, but it's the way that their love changes, not only sexually, which is an element that I don't believe we've ever Mm -mm. seen from Penelope. You could argue we've seen that from Colin, but I don't think we've ever seen that with Penn. So you have the sexual charge to it, but also the reciprocity, meeting a love 
and knowing it is returned is so empowering and there's so much assurance and strength you can get from that. So I feel like obviously this is just a tiny little promo shot, but it feels peppered with elements that we're gonna get yeah. throughout their story. And I just yeah, yeah. adore it. And it's the gorgeous combination. It's the playfulness, which we're gonna see. Yeah, and then the quiet intensity and sensuality. Yeah. And obviously interwoven with this whole thing there in the mirror, mm-hmm. which not only has the resonance for the books, but has huge, huge significance in terms of identity and grappling with your identity and accepting it and growth and seeing each other for who you truly Mm -hmm. truly are and it feels like in that moment they're seeing each other and they're seeing that they're both at the same moment as one another also how significant in that it starts with them both looking into the mirror and it ends with them looking at each other away from the mirror oh so good them against everything okay so that's kind of a shot by shot (laughs) breakdown shall we jump into their costumes yeah why not Veg, you're not here with us, but you know, you're always on duty, our little fashion correspondent. How are they both looking? Well, funnily enough, both Mirapen and Colin are old friends of the podcast, as we have certainly seen them both before. Reduce, reuse, recycle, indeed. First up, listeners will know Mirapen as T-shirt pen and as loved up pen from Milan. Thankfully, though, we do see her here in glorious high definition, which is rarity in this fandom. Are we done with the days of blurs? Oh my goodness. And we can appreciate every detail of her costuming. So we've got a great view of the dress, which is kind of leaning more towards a light muted bluey green in this clip, which is a bit more warm toned. And as we saw a t-shirt pen, there's like a light pink trim across the neckline of the dress. And this soft pink is actually carried throughout the fabric of the dress as like a pink floral pattern across the green blue of the fabric. It's gorgeous. And speaking of the fabric, it definitely has a shimmery quality to it, and Penelope's finishing off the look with her now classic, fingerless and very sheer gloves. We love a bit of sheer, we love a bit of sexy, they're gloves, so it doesn't really count, but we'll take it. And a huge shout out to the hair and makeup team here. Her auburn waves are once again falling lusciously over one shoulder, whilst being pulled back by a blue flower on the other side. Of course, we have the season three kiss curls delicately framing her features, and Penelope's makeup is especially exquisite here with deep and sensuous smoky eyes and a perfectly glossy pink lip. And of course, we can't neglect to mention our devoted necklace truthers. (gasps) who have surely swooned over the sight of the Tudum Moonlight Pen necklace once again making an appearance. And I'm sure our resident necklace truthers, Lecky and Ovs, who've led the charge from the beginning, they will have plenty to say on the matter. And as for Colin, we believe that this is the same as Loved Up Colin and maybe T Colin. It's hard to say for certain, but it's our best guess. DM us. He is wearing a dark blue suit, which, like Pen's dress, appears to have a sheen to the fabric, which is simply perfect for flickering in the candlelight. And free the neck campaign what a week you're having your electorate's growing the third born bridgerton has once again ditched the cravat in favor of an open collar with a royal blue ruffed shirt and like pen he is accessorizing with an old favorite jewelry piece the signet ring we have seen in many a still and has prompted much spiraling amongst fans so to sum up mirror pollen just bloody lovely thank you so much for that veg lecky what are we thinking first of all these are very familiar pen and collins as veg has just shared with us yes do you think this is t colin aka loved up colin from milan i do think it's t colin and it's definitely loved up colin from milan and then in terms of penelope we have definitely seen this dress before oh yeah 100 percent. t-shirt pen is <laughs> italian loved up pen <laughs> is mirror pen and i love it because when we were discussing t-shirt pen we were saying it has the femme fatale yeah we did yeah the woman who is able to navigate mm-hmm. her sexuality and have confidence yeah. in her sexuality so yeah it is notable which we'll return to soon that this is the same pen and colin that we've seen pop up in a few different places promotionally yes which adds weight to our theory that this is just a, this is just not the word just <laughs> has know. never been so unjustly used but this is promo rather mm-hmm. than being an actual mm-hmm. clip from the show not from the editor of course just as we finish editing this they released a new promo which again confirms these are the promo looks for colin and pen this season this new one is clearly meant to symbolize where they are finding each other this season with pen really upset with colin and giving him the cold shoulder and with colin realizing just how much not having pen in his life bothers him. And we think this will probably culminate in something like the loved up pollen pose we saw in Milan near those biscuit tins where they eventually find each other in an embrace. It's also more likely that we will see these particular looks on the book cover tie-in when it's released. Regarding this new promo, however, please, if you go back and rewatch, just zoom in on his hands. Colin so desperately wants to reach out to Penn and it's just killing me. So how are you feeling about the costume? Obviously, cravatless Colin, very dark tones, very sculpted, almost has a shine to it. 
it. Yeah, yeah, the fabric, we were talking about this before and it almost looks thicker, but I think it's just because of the material they used, which has kind of like that shine to it. And it just gives like the mm -hmm. suit so much more structure. So when he steps into frame, yeah. it's just like his presence is so much more there. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Again, almost like that certainty. This is a character whose costuming has been shaped so much by other people and not really knowing how he fits mm -hmm. in the world. And to see his style evolve into this confident yes. presence. He's also wearing his signet ring. He is wearing his signet ring. And this is significant because people have noticed that Penelope isn't wearing an engagement ring. Yes. And if you remember from Loved Up Pollen, it almost looks like he is holding her hand in an interesting way and maybe stroking an empty ring finger. Her ring finger is on display. So interesting, interesting. And then Penelope's dress. Again, we have seen this before, but it's so nice to be able to see this as not a blur on a t-shirt. The color. We thought it was like an icy blue. It's not quite an icy blue. Like it how much time did we just spend before we got on this call? Trying to figure out the color. Sherwin-Williams <laughs> was consulted. What, what is the best <laughs> you've got for us with what color this is? It's got the most hilarious title for this clip. So according to Sherwin-Williams, I'm going to go for a tame teal, like a less saturated, very bright and light teal. And as Veg says, it isn't just tame teal. It has this pink patterning, yeah. the floral is across the whole of the dress mm -hmm. and that has such a gorgeous texture to it. Very, very similar to window pen and, and moonlight pen. Yeah, it, it really, really is similar. And so this pink has been noted by a few people mm -hmm. as being very interesting because we have seen her in these recurring colours, whether it's sort of the sea foam that we've seen, the silvered blue, mm -hmm. the bright blue with Debling. Mm -hmm. But is this the first colour outside of that pollen palette that we've seen from her, I think, this season perhaps? Beyond her episode one <laughs> catastrophes that she's in. <laughs> yeah, in terms of the pink, this is the first glimpse of pink that we've seen in the the leaks and actually officially released content that we received from the season. <laughs> But this is not the first time we've ever seen Pen in pink. No. A really notable moment from season one of her wearing pink was... Oh, Vauxhall. And that was one where she specifically said she chose her own dress. Yes. So we've always associated that moment with such a young Penelope, but her own style and how that looked. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. interestingly, the use of pink popped up a few other times, which we covered in our rewatch. Mm -hmm. But I think notably, obviously, Hearts and Flowers Pen, which mm -hmm. we don't actually know, but we all have the fan theory that she chose that out herself because yeah. she knew she was going to the British in the house and... It's that scene that she stands above as Lady Whistledown across the whole ton, removed, but watching, watching the gossip. And it feels like a very Whistledown toned moment. Yeah. And then again in, in 207, when she has to make the decision as Lady Whistledown to betray Elle. So she wears that really, really adorable outfit in the Bridgerton entryway. If you remember when the camera pans down. Yeah. Yeah. So Lecky, that moment with Eloise mm -hmm. is when she's in that pink dress. And at the end of that episode, again, we covered this on our rewatch. Mm -hmm. So she's wearing the pink capelet that we last saw with Marina. Marina, yeah. Mm -hmm. Instead of the Bridgerton blue Irish maid pen. Yes. I think at the time we discussed how because she was in conflict with Eloise in that moment, mm -hmm. she turned away from the Bridgerton palette. Yeah. And instead of going towards the Featherington palette of citrus, mm -hmm. she chooses this pink. Yes. Which is again that sign of independence that I feel like we've seen from Vauxhall. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then the last time we saw her in pink was in 208 when she was having that argument with Eloise. One of my favourite dresses. When she surprises Eloise because she commands that moment in a way that Eloise has never really seen from her that much mm -hmm, and it's mm -hmm. her trying to stop her whistle down unraveling and so you have all these moments where the color pink seems to be linked with independence mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. often is linked with when penelope is grappling with whistle down or is embodying whistle down mm -hmm. and as we discussed here the use of pink in this outfit seems even more interesting now that we've seen her whole look if you watch the promo video that was just released of colin and pen standing alongside one another you'll see that pen has a blue flower in her hair symbolizing her connection to the bridgertons and as the dress falls to the floor it becomes progressively pinker until there is an almost pink hem and then she also has pink shoes which we think may be Lady Whistledown symbolism. So it's interesting that they've chosen this outfit to be the main promo for Penn instead of for example putting Penelope in an overtly Bridgerton blue dress. This shows that her story is not just about her love story with Colin but about her individual identity as Whistledown and how those two aspects of her life will be intertwined this season. So I think we've had a few theories where yeah. th again the pink has come up. How are you feeling about this in this context? We think this is an episode six look, potentially. A look she might wear after some Lady Whistledown drama, potentially after she is blackmailed by Cressida, something like mm -hmm. that, where there's some sort of Lady Whistledown drama afoot. And I think this was really summed up well by one of our listeners who sent us a message. Mm -hmm. And they noticed what they described as the mix of Bridgerton Blue and Pink. Mm -hmm. And they wondered if this was the balance of her being in love with Colin.
Colin, the blue of the Bridgerton, but the pink being linked with independence and love. And possibly, I'm going to say, almost like it's warring against... Not necessarily with Colin, but dealing with some conflict. Yes. I love that. I was going to say, the sleeves, I think you and Veg commented on this as well, but in the Argentinian leaks that we got last week, her sleeves are much longer, almost kind of like that enchanted pen look that we got from this morning. And here they're much shorter, much softer, much more sultry, like we've discussed before. So that's Mm -hmm. what makes us think that this is further along in the season than that Argentinian pen and the This Morning leaks. Absolutely. But for me, Lecky, the star of the show is those fingerless gloves. The barely there gloves. But technically there, and that's all propriety (laughs) needs, isn't it? Technicality. (laughs) If it was ever to to get around it, it was them too. We've seen the fingerless gloves all the way from the This Morning leaks of Mm -hmm. 2023, but we saw them appear quite a few times and it really seems to be the style that she's going for. And And the poster. And the poster, of course. In fact, she's even on... Can you see? Oh yeah, that's adorable. I'm just showing Lecky a coaster I have because I finally bought some coasters and you know how long I've been meaning to get this, but I've been traveling for so bloody long. Oh, that's so cute. It's the Barclay Square scene. (laughs) Oh, I love that one from her too. So good. We absolutely love Flame Dog. You'll all know her. (laughs) She's one of the most wonderful pollen artists and I've been meaning to get the Barclay Square mug for the (laughs) longest time. And then I also got some season three inspired coasters. They're just gorgeous. But she has fingerless gloves, which I was just like throwing up to the Zoom camera to show her. (laughs) And we've talked about these fingerless gloves before and how they enable the whistle down of it all. You know, she needs to write. She can't get those ink stains on her gloves. But here in this moment, what I adore is the way that they're technically there, but they allow for so much sensuality. In a moment like this, where they're both in it, that's great. Mm -hmm. But I'm thinking to the earliest, I feel like you can see how these moments are going to build between them, the sort of sexually charged moments. Because Mm -hmm. if you think in lessons, Mm -hmm. if they're having these trying to be innocent moments yeah. that are unraveling before their eyes because they're head over heels for each other. And if you have innocent touches of hands that can no longer be innocent because yeah. it's those fleeting skin on skin moments. What a clever way to do it because if you think back to like season one, Daphne and Simon, there's a scene where they're, they're at the dinner table and he really sensually pulls off her glove before they run yeah. out into the rain or whatever. But in here we have their, <laughs> the gloves barely there. So you still get that skin contact and that's just going to like just constantly remind them that there is this physical chemistry between them this the physicality of the relationship whilst also so brilliantly telling the story of Whistledown Mm -hmm. and of Penelope's independence because we've never seen a character wear anything like that and it feels like such and this is so Penelope it's such a quietly rebellious way to express herself yeah obsessed with it but Lecky the most important detail (laughs) which so many of you gosh we love you so much necklace truthers we received a bombardment of messages just being like the necklace <laughs> I didn't even notice the necklace at first I didn't either Obs had to point it out to me and then I sent her some voice notes I was basically squealing in such a high pitched <laughs> sound that it didn't record anything it couldn't register so we just got like <laughs> static silence because only dogs could hear her <laughs> Lecky what is going on with her necklace <laughs> She is wearing a very familiar necklace that we remember from Back at To Doom in the Moonlight Pollen still and in the Moonlight Pollen clip that we received. Window Pen has the same necklace. And then we speculated that Loved Up Pen had the same necklace and that T-shirt pen had the same necklace, but we weren't sure because they were a little blurry. We were a little more Mm -hmm. sure with Loved Up Pen. But then to see it in the equivalent of what might be the mirror scene, are you kidding me? This necklace has to be significant in some way. Why is she re-wearing this (laughs) necklace so many times? I'm sorry, but this is a fever dream. Please tell me that Colin gets her this necklace. Please tell me that he buys it for her on his travels or shortly after returning home, maybe in an attempt to heal their relationship. Please Mm -hmm. tell me that there is a significance to the story to this necklace because why else is she wearing it so often? And why is she wearing it in promo for the mirror scene? What? the hell? (laughs) I honestly feel like I'm going insane. So this will be something that really long time listeners will know because I think this was from our second ever episode, Can You Believe It, back in June. So when we got the dumb stills, Mm -hmm. when we were having our immediate reaction, me and Lecky were like, oh my god. We went down a rabbit hole. We just immediately were like, I think this necklace has significance. I think he bought her it because, long story short, early on in filming, Nicola shared a photo of herself in like a course and tracks that was really playful but she'd covered over with three hearts. She'd covered over a necklace. We'd always wondered like what was so significant about this necklace what could be a spoiler about a necklace and we just want to point out that that was from very early on in the shoot she keeps re-wearing it 
why? Why? Because if you go back and look at past seasons, like they don't tend to rewear the same pieces of jewelry that often. No. And for this to pop up in promo in such a big way, uh, my spidey senses are tingling. Because if it was made to match Moonlight Pen, Mm -hmm. then they wouldn't just reuse it for a different pen. They're so meticulous with these details. Mm -hmm. And obviously something that everyone has been noticing as well is one of the bits of information that was dropped during the rewatch is that the Bridgetons always have silver jewelry, sort of delicate silver jewelry. Featheringtons always have gold. Yes. And the Sharmas had rose gold as a palette. Just let me go back down the rabbit hole for a second. If you also think about it, this is friends to lovers. There's really no other scenario technically where a man can buy a piece of jewelry for somebody else that he's like interested in or is friends with. And Colin, he's just, it's something he would do for sure and they just have this history as friends that he might not bat an eye that's something he might do without thinking even though subconsciously he's already realizing that he's starting to fall in love with Penn. So as you said, Lecky, we have this pen and this Colin who we've seen in a few different scenarios now. So t-shirt pen, loved up pollen, tea Colin, one of my favorite Colins of all time. (laughs) Amazing. Floating around. We never (laughs) thought we'd see this mirror scene. We never thought we would see Colin in tea. We'll take it. The duality of a manning. In a mirror, in a cup of tea. (laughs) So there's been a lot of speculation since this was released. So a few theories for you, Lecky. Mm -hmm. This is an actual clip from the actual episode of the actual mirror scene happening. This is a clip from the show, but it's a dream sequence, whether it's Penn's dream or Colin's dream, could be either way. Or the third theory is that this isn't an actual clip from the show, but this is a specifically shot clip for promo, where it's definitely picking up on the themes and the intensities and the emotions of the story as a whole, Mm -hmm. but it's constructed just for promo. We're not actually going to see literally this in the show. What are we thinking? This is promo to me, and Mm. here's why. First of all, while this has a very dreamy quality to it, we had just received the Antony promo where we saw them all lovey and dovey and love and this kind of has a very similar feel to it. Also, Luke Newton when he was discussing the upcoming season for the Valentine's Day event, he said he felt exposed during the mirror scene. I don't quite get the vibe here. Maybe that happens after this. I just think this is promo. (laughs) And then the last thing is back in December, we noticed that they were shooting something in Penelope's bedroom before the end of the year and I wonder if it was this promotional material. I agree with you. I think it's promo and that's not to detract from the fact that I think the, the mirror scene will be very similar. Mm-mm. I think they might look slightly different, might be in slightly different costumes. Maybe slightly less dressed. But I think, I agree, if you look back at the season two promo, they have these sort of dream-esque promo clips. Mm-mm. There's one of Anthony, I think, walking into rooms and these slow-mo longing gazes that aren't actually aspects of the show directly taken, but they are very yeah. much in keeping with the themes of them. And I feel like this is exactly that. Yeah. But I think we can still get so much from it, which is why everyone's so excited as well. Mm-hmm. Also, it would make sense then if they're wearing the same costumes as the other promo pieces that we've seen because if they've had like a day where they're specifically because yeah. we know that they film all these character inserts you know what it reminds me of Daisy Penn mm-hmm, mm-hmm. in the show Daisy Penn has that hairstyle where it's like the three curl tendrils yeah. and the really elaborate hairstyle mm-hmm. where promo Daisy Penn has a completely different hairstyle that we never actually see her wear in the show mm-hmm. yeah. and it's just used in different contexts it's not sort of in context of the staircase scene and yeah. I feel like that's what we have here where you have the costuming that appears in the show but it's a specific promo day where they mm-hmm. would have filmed inserts like these Mm -hmm. where Mm -hmm. they took the photos like Penelope staring from the t-shirt and Colin from the cup of tea. Speaking of the shoot they did back in December, they were also filming in Lady Danbury's parlor, etc. So I'd be interested to see if we'll see more character promo shots and videos from that. If we see one in Lady Danbury's parlor with Lady Danbury or maybe Marcus Anderson or something, that would tell me that maybe they shot this back in December and that's when they were filming all, all these at the same time. I was also thinking that maybe they wanted to shoot in Penelope's bedroom one last time before they potentially repurposed the set for season four. Because she ain't gonna need it. Because they may not need Penelope Featherington's bedroom anymore. <laughs> but it's same with Colin Bridgerton's bedroom. So I'm with you. I think it's promo, but I think we still get so much of the tone of the season from here. And so, of course, as you said, we're in Penelope's bedroom. Scandalous. How do we know that we're in Penn's room? Okay, so the walls are pink with green trim. Very recognisable walls. And if you look in the reflection, you can see that. So, lucky, Colin Bridgerton in Penelope Featherington's room. How'd you get there, Mr. Bridgerton? Did you go through the window? (laughs) Maybe he needed to tell about some gemstone mines again. And he was like, let me take your hand. I'm very concerned. Let me lead you up to your room. (laughs) 
you know what? I wouldn't put him past him to lead her up to her room instead of the, <laughs> the Featherington drawing room. She's like, if you need me to look in the mirror, there's just a mirror by the doorway. He's like, no, 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 not that kind of chat, love. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so if we're going that this is promo then, mm-hmm. it's not necessarily that this is exactly how the mirror scene itself is going to unfold. Mm-hmm. I want your theory because we have discussed this before and I think we've joked in the past that the mirror scene would be in Colin's room or that the mirror scene will be folded into the engagement night. Mm-hmm. Did you think this is going to be in Penelope's room? In like two separate situations, like the engagement night is the engagement night and this is this night. Well, you know, I was so convinced it was going to be his room, but I just mm. don't know why they would have the mirror in her room if it wasn't going to be in her room. Yeah, I think it does make sense. I'm pretty sure we'll check, but I don't think this mirror exists in her room at the moment. There is a big mirror in Eloise's room but this is like golden framed. Oh, it's so incredible. Yes, I was going to say there's a huge mirror in Eloise's room, but I don't remember seeing... I mean, let's be honest, had there been a full-length mirror in Penn's room from day one, we'd have been screaming about it from day one. <laughs> I think it will also happen in Penn's room now, and here's why. I think mm. this mirror, obviously we know the mirror scene, huge significance, but the themes of identity and reflection, and for Penelope in so many ways, be it her confidence, be it her writing, be it her love, actually looking herself in the mirror and confronting the truth of that. Mm-hmm. I think if we're going to have this massive mirror in her room we're going to have scattered throughout the season so many moments of her captured in the mirror do you know when she decides to change her wardrobe yes that sort of moment of her self-reflection maybe moments throughout the season as we go along as she's struggling with suitors as she's having moments of reflection the mirror will represent so many different things Mm -hmm. and I can imagine the show lingering on those moments as a theme that then culminates into this moment with the two of them together Mm -hmm. and what the mirror scene is more than just obviously this heightened sexual moment is a moment with both of them accepting each other for who they are as individuals and together (sighs) so massive fucking mirror there we go yes no idea why she suddenly got it but i'm so down for it yeah it it is interesting because i i was so convinced that it was going to be in his room for some reason i guess just because that's how it plays out in the book i just think it would be hilarious to be like just that initial pan where we're like oh it's we're in colin's room how lovely oh look at his maps oh look at his carpet and then do mirror (laughs) well i was also thinking that penelope knows how to get into the bridgerton house and she knows how to get in there without being seen and you know the staff is probably familiar with her presence there whereas this requires Colin to somehow (laughs) get into her room I'm looking forward to seeing how that happens if I had to guess I'm gonna say that engagement night is his room because for me it makes more sense for that to be in his childhood room because Mm -hmm. his story is so much about growing up and changing and yeah having that moment of realization which which the engagement night is for them both yeah and we think these will be separate scenes this is I mean this is quite pertinent because we've been recording our book reread that a lot of the engagement night for Colin is him seeing it and being like I don't know when I don't know how but I know it is Mm -hmm. but to have that moment with them taking that step together in his room feels like the right direction Mm -mm. but then for the mirror scene to be in her room when her story has been so much about identity dual identity you're struggling to reconcile who you are inside versus how you're perceived by the outside world Mm -hmm. that scene contextually makes sense to be sat with her realm and her world yeah that does and the two of them existing in that space together Mm -hmm. like oh my god (laughs) anything else the other two are freaking out i swear to you no one on this earth was more excited than beans was (laughs) (laughs) and alarmed that she couldn't reach anybody god love her but we are absolutely freaking out i mean here we go promo what's going off with a bang i don't know how they can top this i was going to say that we may not be releasing as many emergency episodes in the future partly because i don't think they can top this besides you know releasing <laughs> finally the teaser trailer we're having to like redefine what an emergency is yeah because in the past we have made a podcast during the wilderness weeks where an emergency would have been like a new sticker has been released and this is an emergency or where it's been like a song has been <laughs> added to a playlist we analyze the costumes on a puzzle yeah uh, <laughs> but we're now redefining it so mm-hmm. also bear with us it's a very busy time as you say we can't release an emergency episode for every single crumb we have earmarked certain moments where we will be on it with the emergencies yes but i would say anything happens and you want our in the moment reaction the best place to catch us is our instagram we will post where we can we have a very exciting few weeks coming up with our book reread lecky yes 
yes. I was going to say the other reason we may not have as much time for emergency episodes beyond the fact that I feel like we're going to get a teaser trailer really soon and it's just making me so nervous. It's pollen week next week. Oh, I can't. I can't. I was trying to finish an edit for pollen week, but I don't think it's going to happen. But yeah. So yeah, our book reread episodes are coming very soon. So yeah, the whole month of April, we'll be releasing four episodes for our book read. We still have to post our calendar so you can read yeah. along with us, but we will do that so you can read along with pollen and their love story leading up to season three and we hope you have a lot of fun with it as you realize that it may have taken him 12 years to realize pen was there but when he gets back in england you'll see how fucking fast that story moves so lecky we'll be doing a book reread but do you need to have already read the book i can tell you as a spoiler that one of us in the podcast has not read the book and will not be reading the book during our book reread no you don't need to have read the book we will be recapping the books for you so if you haven't read the Mm -hmm. book fear not and if you don't have time to read it just yet then we also have a fun segment for you that we are going choose your own bean venture because <laughs> beans has not read the book so as we recap the events that take place in the book you two can play along with beans and see if you can accurately <laughs> predict what happens next in the narrative is this a a good idea b a terrible idea or c an idea that is neither good nor bad but somewhat gray like our morally gray leading lady that remains to be seen but happy listening happy almost anniversary yeah. so <laughs> much is coming up i cannot wait and then big mood is released today i yes. want to watch that but i can't because we need to edit this oh lord yeah we're in the coming weeks yeah they are happening to us i can't believe we're here i think we've asked the others for a reaction so veg show your thoughts here hello it's me veg i'm at home not at work so i can get more excited sorry if you can hear tippy tapping in the background that's my boyfriend playing a game would slay the spire <laughs> Maybe some of the listeners are gamers. Anyway, he's not the most important man in my life right now. Do you know who is? Colin Bloody Bridgerton. And his reflection. Oh my goodness. So hot. They're both such gorgeous people. They're both just shimmering in the light. Oh, oh my God. Like, why is everyone so good looking in this damn show? Gosh, it's just, I'm sure every detail has been looked at. So I just want to say that listeners, imagine if we got the series when we thought we were going to have it in December and we'd had a couple of weeks of rushed promo. Would we want that? Like, I know we'd have had the series by now, but isn't this so worth it? Well, I'm off to bed. (laughs) Those are my thoughts. Good night. Beans. Oh, it is beans. (laughs) Coming to you from a distant land. Da, 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 da. And I'm going to make cheese in a little bit. <laughs> or anyway, here are my thoughts. Hot. You know, it's just hot. You know, thank you so much for putting that out there. Little Bridgerton social meads peeps. Our little goats. The manifestation of it all. How lovely. Right? How lovely. Uh, First of all, I, like most women who love period pieces, were hand girls. That little stroking of the two of their hands, the caresses, makes me, you know, need to step into Antarctica for several days. The look that Colin gives Penelope is just to... uh, When he's walking in and he looks at her and his, like, mouth is slightly agape and he's like, oh my god, I've waited to see you all my life. Oh my god. (sighs) It's just so good. It's just so good. I do think this is a promo because of the way that they colored everything after. What's the word? They shaded everything? I don't know what it is. Right now, I can't think. Oh, there was some debate. I think that instrumental is original. I think it is an original piece by Chris Bowers, The Goat. And I'm so, it sounds so dramatic, doesn't it? It sounds so good, which I mean, I feel like this season, there is going to be a lot of drama from all ends of the spectrum, you know? But I think it's just like so intense and so good. And Ah, oh, and the music, the way it rises when they like finally touch each other and they're looking in the mirror and it's just, oh, and that's all I got for y'all. I'll let you know how my cheese goes. Bean signing out from the Netherlands. I'm not in the Netherlands. I mean like the Nether Ever Fantasylands. <laughs>
Okay, bye. So we will next see you probably in our absolutely maligned, neglected block <laughs> four part two, which we recorded in January, <laughs> in which there may or may not be a wedding, <laughs> as you may have become aware. <laughs> oh my god, uh, it, it just keeps getting pushed back. We're gonna try really hard to get it out at some point <laughs> because yeah. we just need it off our plates. To be honest, yeah. You'll hear from us soon, but in the meantime, Lecky, where can everyone find us? You can find us at Whatabarb Pod on Instagram and TikTok. Talk. And if you listen to podcasts, you can also find us on YouTube where we have Beans' lovely collages. And if you're listening on YouTube, we are also on all podcast platforms. We are indeed. The coming weeks are here. Let's go. Beans, my love, you're hard at work with your curds and whey. Better breathe, leave it. Put the cheese down for a second. You're making Finch proud, but right now we need you to sing us out. I did it. I did it. I burnt my hands, but I did it. Oh my gosh. It might not be perfect. It's right now, it has to cool down for 10 minutes, which I should start an alarm and start recording but it's fine oh my god i did it see here's the thing this is a lesson for life and just in general this when i finally taste this it might not be the best mozzarella that there is but i've given myself the foundation to improve and by not giving up on yourself Oh, here's advice that I got from my therapist, actually, that I repeat to myself all the time. That's actually from Matthew McConaughey's dad. And I think it's great advice. Instead of saying, I can't, I can't do this, I can't do this, start saying, I'm having trouble with. Because when you say I can't, it's so final. You know, it's like, I can't, period. However, I'm having trouble with means, yeah, I'm having trouble with this now, but that doesn't mean that I won't have trouble in the future. When you like rewire those things, a lot of stuff in life becomes less intimidating. And life is like big and scary anyway. So like having hobbies, having like goals that you want to accomplish are just a lot of fun because it's like, look at this. I can do this and I don't have to be the best, but I can keep trying and keep improving. And even the professionals are always, always, always trying to improve their game. If they're a musician, their instrument, whatever. Everyone's always trying to improve. So that's my advice for you. Does violin do 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 do